He has had to pilot his plane without his captain, who has undergone physical stresses that no one can be expected to survive. I think these extreme conditions, no one expects to occur in their lifetime. His survival time must have been measured in no more than tens of minutes as he became colder and colder and his body systems began to shut down. Tim Lancaster's body was subjected to a two-pronged assault. The physical violence that his body suffered being blown out of the plane and the extreme cold and lack of oxygen at 17,000 feet. Every 1,000 feet of altitude causes the temperature to drop by about three and a half degrees. So the temperature on the outside of the plane would have been near zero. The extreme wind chill also meant his body was losing heat very rapidly. He would have lapsed into semi-consciousness and then unconsciousness. Uh, and as the temperature, his core body temperature fell, he would have uh, finally died as a result of uh, the, the ex excessive cold in that environment. Despite the trauma that Lancaster's body suffered, there is one final twist to his story. You know, it's only once I've ever been here, and that was 10 yeah. years ago, 15 years ago. In the Oxfordshire countryside, John Heward and Nigel Ogden are visiting one of their crew members who shared their horrific experiences. Here he is. Hi, guys. John, how hey. are you? Nice to see you. Nice to see you, Mike. Nigel, oh. come in, come in. Hi. Like an SCP, when you go in, you've got to pretend that... The captain of that flight, Tim Lancaster, has somehow survived his horrific ordeal. There were no fatalities on BA-5390. Yeah, that's it now, though. You can go on the three-day cruise across there. Yeah. As his frozen, lifeless body was removed from the plane, nobody thought that Lancaster could have survived such punishment. But remarkably, he was slowly beginning to emerge from the effects of his horrific accident. Tim, can you hear me? I regained some consciousness on the ground at Southampton because uh, I remember big red and white things, which were obviously fire engines and ambulances, not people and not conversation. And then my next uh, clear, lucid thoughts are in hospital in Southampton. Over the next few days, all the bits eventually arrived back in my sort of consciousness and I put the jigsaw together and, uh, you know, sort of played the whole story for myself and... Uh, understood what had happened. I went down there last year, yeah. but they've changed the airport totally and now. This, I'm glad I did hold on, because uh, Tim was alive. I mean, he's a very strong man. He must have been. To survive that, I wouldn't have been able to survive it. That's all very dramatic. It is, isn't it? Tim Lancaster's survival is a little short of miraculous. He'd been minutes away from death. It was Alistair Atchison's flying that saved his life. His quick thinking and getting the plane to the ground in only 22 minutes saved Lancaster from dying from the effects of exposure. And by pure chance, the physical trauma he suffered was limited. It included a bone fracture in his right arm and wrist, a broken left thumb, bruising, frostbite, and shock. Remarkably, within five months, Lancaster had made a full recovery and was flying again.